Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. This little display screen is showing uh, FT8 and it is just jammed with signals. Um, if you haven't tried it, give it a try. It really is a phenomenon. It's not difficult to start. Um, it, you can get a lot of help on YouTube. I'll be doing a video about it. Right now it isn't my favorite mode but it's the one mode that really does amaze me. I can come in here at 2 o'clock in the morning. 20 meters is dead. I've got a couple of scope things showing me the band. There's nothing on the band except FT8. And it's jammed like that. Um, the subject of, of this video is, uh, in, in a kind of in a funny way for the title of the video, um, is your SWR meter being perfectly honest with you? I want to again get a discussion going about feed lines and SWR. And in my view, the most important part of your station is not the microphone, the key that you use, the transceiver that you have. It's the antenna system and of that system which includes coax connectors, switches, and that kind of thing. Feline is the crucial part of that. Next in line would be the uh, the actual antenna that does the radiating. If the feed line is garbage, you're just eating up watts in the feed line. If the antenna doesn't radiate worth a darn, you, nobody's going to hear you and you're not going to hear anybody. This, I think, will be a, a graphic demonstration of why that's the case. It'll be a little bit confusing. I've already videoed that part of it. Um, stick around to watch it because I think that you'll find the results of my little test, which isn't rigged, um, pretty interesting. So here's the situation. You're in your station and you're on the air. And the SWR, as indicated on your transceiver, is 1.8 to 1. And so you push the button, the antenna tuner changes that to uh, 1 to 1, you're good to go. What could be wrong? What you're going to see in the video is that if you have 100 feet of coax, uh, and I've got a, a roll of brand new off-the-shelf RG8X, but if you put 100 watts into it at the transceiver, so you've got, um, let's say you've got a brand new uh, ICOM 7300, one of the best transceivers ever for the price, you can't beat it. So you've got 100 watts out of that box into the coax. Do you know what's getting to the antenna? You see a 1.6 to 1 or 1.8 to 1 SWR <clears throat> that you've gotten down to Unity by using the antenna tuner. How much power is actually getting to the antenna? Uh, is your SWR meter lying to you? In a way it is, and it's not its fault. It's sampling at the transceiver. But to overcome that, what I did was I've got several SWR meters connected in the scheme of things. One of them is connected right to the light bulb. So we can see the power, it's within six inches. So we can see the power that's getting to the light bulb. Um, so I have, and I can also measure the SWR there. And what, what we're going to find in the video is the SWR at the light bulb is 5 to 1. The SWR in the shack, without any matching, looks to be about 1.6 to 1.8 to 1. So you might think in, in your radio room that everything is fine because the SWR is 1.6, 1.8, 1 1.7, less than 2 to 1. But in fact, it's not good found it interesting or if you learned something please do subscribe if you have a comment please post that below if you can help somebody uh, by answering their question please go ahead and do it um, <clears throat> it's there are a lot of people who watch these videos who know a lot more about this than I do I'm going to say 73 for now and switch it over to the video uh, that I've recorded earlier thanks for watching stay tuned for what really is the best part of that and that's the light bulb Seven, three. Okay, here we go. I'm using two bird watt meters. Um, one is for forward, forward power, the other is for 
reflected power, K3 into the P3. P3 is a built-in wattmeter. Uh, I've got a camera mounted to look at the screen. Above that is an N8LP100 wattmeter. I've got a field strength meter, but I don't know it's going to do any good. Coax switch to switch between the dummy load, which is a bird, watt me a bird dummy load, and the light bulb. So first test, let's measure the output from the K3 and set it for some power level that's not going to cause any damage. So I'm going to dial up 30 watts. Okay, the meter on the left shows 30 watts. 5 on the upper scale is 50. Meter on the right shows 0 reflected power. Switch from the um, dummy load to the light bulb. And turn on the antenna tuner so the K3 is happy. Um, I'll use the small screen to uh, that's looking at the P3 watt meter, which is a peak reading watt meter, and has um, SWR also indicated. So it shows PEP and SWR at the same time. King of the K3, trying to dial up 30 watts. Um, and there we go, 30.4, 30.3, at a 1.35 to 1 SWR. You can also see the bulb is barely lit. So why is that? It should be brighter. Um, let's look at the N8LP wattmeter and see what it says. Okay, that's 9 watts getting to the light bulb with an SWR of 4.33 to 1. But in the radio room, the SWR looks to be 1.3 to 1. And you can see the bulb is, is not as bright as it could be, or as it should be. So what, what's the difference? What's causing the huge losses? And where, uh, for that matter, where are they occurring in the system? So to do that, I'm going to go to an online calculator um, that calculates feed line losses and it's been for me it's been reasonably accurate okay this is an online calculator there's several of them up uh, most of them look to be about the same so let's change from RG213 the default to RG8X from Belden 150 feet I was on 29 megahertz uh, the SWR at the load was 4.33 to 1. I was running 30.3 watts. Not that, that matters a whole bunch, but 30 watts anyway. And we'll calculate it. Now the online calculator says I should be delivering 12 watts to the antenna. I was measuring 9. In either case, there's a lot of loss. To figure out that loss, let's change the wattage to 100 watts so we can figure it like a percentage. So we'll put in 100 there, calculate, and 40 watts is getting to the antenna if we were putting in 100. In other words, 60% loss um, in, in the system. Now what happens if we change coax to something that doesn't have, that's a larger diameter that doesn't have as much loss? And that something might be LMR 400, which a lot of guys use. So let's put that in, same length, same frequency, same SWR. Um, we'll keep it at 100 watts so we can do a percentage. And we'll see if we have the 40 watts going to the antenna, or is it going to be something greater? So I'm going to hit the Calculate button. And I'm getting 65 watts. So instead of losing... Um, 60 watts, I'm losing uh, 36 watts, roughly 35 watts. So one-third loss, two-thirds getting there. Now, let's say money was no object and you go to a hard line, a large diameter hard line coax, like a commercial broadcaster. Now the percentage of efficiency goes to 87%. Um, what effect does a load SWR have on the feed line losses? So let's say the loss was or the SWR is 1.3 to 1, 
now the efficiency goes to 93%. Not a huge change, but a small one. Let's say you're using RG8X and you have a 1.3 to 1 loss. You're still losing 50% in the coax, 47% as opposed to 60%. So still huge losses, irrespective, not so much dependent on the um, load SWR, but on the feed line. And that's why I say feed line is hugely important to the efficiency of your system. Now, let's say we were on 14.2 um, megahertz, 20 meters. What would the loss be then? Uh, because we've lowered the frequency. Generally, losses are lower as you go lower in frequency. Um, the loss still is at 35%. Because we're getting delivering 65 watts out of 100. Now, if we go to um, LMR 400 again, same SWR, everything else is the same. The 65% um, efficiency we saw with RG8X, when we hit the calculate button, that goes to 85%. So we've picked up 20% just based upon the coax. To summarize, it really pays to use great coax, and no matter how you slice it, by changing the SWR at the feed point, um, it is hugely important to have decent coax. All right, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. If you have a question about something, um, post it below. If you have an answer to someone's question, please do answer. Um, Everybody's input is welcome here. As I said earlier, there are a lot of folks who know more about this stuff than I do. So if you have an answer to someone's question, please uh, go ahead and post it. Um, it's The point of this video was your feed line is hugely important in the scheme of things. So having a good feed line to the antenna is crucial. More important than a fancy microphone or uh, uh a fancy transceiver feed line can either make or break your station. All right, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for watching. See you the next time.